and welcome to Cha Time. I'm Frida, your host for this week. Suchita from St. George Pharmacy gives us some great advice on homeopathy. We meet a unique artist who combines the strangest items to create beautiful and longer lasting artwork. Later, we visit Noura's Mediterranean kitchen, which caters to people from all around the globe. And Neha has another yoga posture for you to practice at home. But first, let us meet Suchitta from St. George Pharmacy, a professional in homeopathy medicine. A homeopathy is a method of treatment that supports the body's own healing mechanism. When taking homeopathic medicine, you are effectively kick starting your body into fighting the problem itself by giving your immune system the necessary information to do so. Homeopathy gives a rapid, gentle and permanent cure. Homeopathic medicines are made from the elements found in nature, minerals, herbs, animals and plant extracts. Homeopathic medicines work on mind and body and also relieves tension and anxiety. Homeopathic uh, medicine usually do not have any side effect. They may have some bad effects if it's misused or abused. It's also true that homeopathic medicine will also cure certain epidemic and infectious diseases which traditional drug cannot. Um, for example, a person suffering from asthma may need to take inhalers all his life. But with the homeopathic treatment of two or more years, his or her immune system is so strong that they stop reaching the allergens. Yes, uh, we've got so many medicines for like acute headache and chronic headaches, migraine pains and much, much more. After the break, we meet Lian Chong, a beautiful artist with beautiful hair. Stick around to find out. Welcome back. In 1995, Lian came from Malaysia to study art here in New Zealand. She tells us about her unique embroidery art. I came to New Zealand when I was 15 and I started going to high school. Um, I did my sixth form and I did my seventh form in order to get into art school. When Lian joined the art school, she wanted to do something for the Asian art scene in New Zealand. When I was at university, I realized that I was studying in a very sort of Western-centric context, and and I sort of wanted to somehow insert this my Chinese um, heritage into what I was studying to make it more relevant to myself. Um, and at that time, there weren't that many Chinese artists when I started studying art in university. Um, but the few that there were, um, or that was coming out of China, um, they were really interesting in how they used their bodies in contemporary art. And so I decided to, um, to start using my hair in artworks. I started putting it into paintings. Because my hair, at, at that time, my hair was really long. And, um, and it would sort of just be everywhere. And so, and so I, I, one day I picked it up and started twisting it and I, and I realized that it made all these really interesting abstract shapes. And that, at that time I was studying abstract painting. So, so for me, that sort of, um, that, the shapes that the twisted hair made sort of corresponded to Chinese calligraphy and how fluid it was. So I started using it as language, and, and I started becoming really fascinated with the properties of hair. 
um, and and the meanings that it carried. Um, so, so with with hair, there's all sorts of sort of language implied. So, say there's DNA. So, there's obviously my sort of Chinese DNA in that hair that's being put into art. And and there's also body language as well. So, the way you wear your hair is, is sort of um, expresses to someone, uh, expresses to people around you. Uh, Sort of how who you are and 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 what you want to sort of say to the people around you, kind of thing, and um, and there's also all sorts of I guess social and cultural sort of associations with hair. Prior to discovering her own embroidery skills, Lien didn't know that it was a centuries-old art practiced in China. When she found out. She started expanding with her own hair art. After my masters, I I decided that I wanted to revisit um, the idea of hair in art, and I had this idea that I would embroider a dragon with my own hair, and that was one of the first embroideries that I made with my hair. And I guess for me, it was something that was. In a way, quite empowering that some part of me could become a dragon,、uh, even though I was at that at that time a really, I guess you could say,、um, a, a sort of shy, timid character. For me, that was、um, a way that I could sort of get out of it and and、um, and become something else. So so that was how I started with my hair embroideries.